This video is part of a character creation series where we go through the modeling, the texturing, the rigging, and the animation of the character. However, I know not everybody will want to do every video in this series. So what I've done is I've provided a free project file in the description below where you can download and start from any point. So with that being said, let's get started. Super excited to announce that my new asset pack is available both on Blender Market and Gumroad. At launch, it's on sale, so the quicker you buy it, the cheaper it is. There's also a sample pack if you'd like to check out a portion of it before committing. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below. Most people in Blender are familiar with Rigify. It's a free add-on you can enable under the preferences, and most people know it as the add-on that gives you a list of preset armatures where you can quickly generate character rigs based off of these presets. But what happens when you want to rig something that doesn't fit in one of these preset categories? Well, I feel like not many people know that Rigify actually has a bunch of building block tools that allow you to quickly create your own rigs. It's much faster than building rigs from the ground up, and it also gives you access to much more complicated rigging fixtures than you may not be able to implement yourself. So today we're going to look at how we can generate some custom rigs using Rigify on our character. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an armature bone here so that I can show you some of these options. So if I go ahead and grab this bone and come over here to the armature tab, you can see that we have Rigify bone groups, Rigify layer names, generation, and then down here we'll see more options in the pose mode, you have the Rigify type. So we can actually use these elements to go ahead and create our own rig. So most people, as I said, they know it for the kind of basic rigs here. So if I go ahead and grab a human rig, you can see how the these are utilized. So we have the Rigify bone groups and those will determine the different groups that our bones will be applied to. Down here are the layer names, which will generate a UI up there. And then if we come into pose mode and grab some of these root bones, we can see down here that we can determine the type of rig and then it will determine where the layers are assigned. So understanding how that works, let's go ahead and grab this and just click generate rig. And I'm gonna grab that rig to show you how it works up here. Here's where the rig layers appear. And then when I tab into pose mode, Here's all the colors that correspond with those groupings that we saw. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this rig. Now you can go ahead and you can actually start from just a single bone and you can add standard here and then add rigify layers and go ahead and name everything manually, but that's kind of a bit tedious. So what we're actually going to do is just gonna go ahead, we'll add that basic human meta rig and then we'll tab in edit mode here and we'll just go ahead and delete everything and we're going to end up starting with scratch and the reason we're doing that is because that over here it gives us this default set of groupings here and the layer names are already completed so we don't have to type all of those out but we are going to go ahead and add our own custom layer name because we're going to have some facial control so let's go ahead in here and we're just going to type face and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this UI to that'll mean it'll appear on row two, which is where I want it to appear. Then over here we have the bone group and I want everything in the face group to appear as the special. So I'm going to go ahead and go one, two, three, and that'll put it in the special group. So great. Now I talked about Rigify having kind of these building blocks. So if I go ahead and twirl these up here, we're done with that for now. You can see here that now this Rigify samples menu has appeared. And if we scroll through here, we can see we have all these options of kind of pre-built sections of rigs. And these are really just the pieces that are put together to create those preset rigs that we showed earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a few of these to work on our character. So I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm gonna turn back on my character object up here, and then I'm gonna grab this and move it up on the Z axis so that it's kind of flat there right on the X axis. And that's because when Rigify adds the root bone, it's going to add it to kind of the center of the scene. So you're gonna want your character's feet on the bottom of the scene here. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my rig, and I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and I'm ready to begin adding some objects to the scene. So I'm gonna come over here to viewport display, and click in front, and that'll just make sure all the bones appear in front of my character, making it a bit easier. And we're gonna come down here to the samples and add a couple of options. So you can see there's quite a few options here, which can be a bit overwhelming, but there's a couple simple ones that are easy to use. So we're gonna go ahead and do limbs leg, and then what we can do is grab that up there and click add sample. And you can see how that's going to add that to our scene. So I'm gonna switch into wireframe view here. And by default, it creates the left side. If you go ahead and grab those bones, you can see it's dot L. So we're gonna move it over to the left side of our character. 
So I'm gonna grab these and move those over on the X axis so that they're in line with the leg right there. I'm gonna go ahead, scale those up a bit, and then we'll go to the side view here and we're going to adjust these bone values a bit. So I'm gonna grab these bottom ones here. And now our character doesn't have feet, but I actually feel like it's easier to animate with the foot controls, which is why I'm still using this kind of full leg for this character. So I'm gonna go ahead, just maybe move the bottom of the foot right there to the, the bottom of the leg there. And then I'll go ahead, grab this joint, make sure that's kind of at the pivot point there. Go ahead, grab this maybe a little bit further back on the Y axis. Great, so we have our leg in place. So now we're gonna go ahead and add an arm. So you'll see here that we have the limbs leg, and then we also have a limbs arm. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab that limbs arm, and click add sample. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this up here and scale this up a bit. And again, we don't have a hand on our character, but the hand controls will make the overall arm easier to animate as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, rotate this. And then what I'm gonna do is grab this end piece with the hand here, move that just out to the center. Go ahead, make sure this is kind of centered on our elbow joint, move this up to our shoulder joint. Great, then I can go to the top view, make sure that everything looks good there. Go to the side view, make sure everything looks good there. It looks pretty center. I'm gonna go ahead and select this whole thing and just move it over there to the center. Great, so now we kind of have an arm and a leg for our character, but we have quite a few other pieces we're going to do. So that gets those out of the way, but we're gonna need to do the body, the jaw, the eyebrows, and the flaps up here. So let's look at how we can begin adding some other basic bones. Now there are a bunch of limbs here with spines and everything like that, but with our character, we're gonna have a short kind of like little thick body, so we don't necessarily need a full spine on our character, especially as it's a more robotic character, it's okay if they move a little bit more kind of rigid. So what we're actually going to do that I found worked best for this is the head. So down here, we just need to go ahead and add a head, and you'll see that adds this little head option in here. We can grab that. We're just gonna go ahead and scale that up. And I found the best way for this to work is kind of just there from the top to bottom. Perfect, let's make sure that matches in the middle there on the side view, great. We don't really need this to be rotated too much, so we can go ahead and kind of rotate these a bit to make them a bit straighter for our needs. And I think a little bit of give is okay, so I'm just gonna rotate those just a tiny bit so we get something that feels a bit more natural in our body. Great. Next up, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and begin creating some kind of basic controls for these eyebrows and these lids up here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a what's called a super copy. And that super copy is going to allow us to kind of create our own little basic controls in there. So you say we have basic, pivot, raw, and super copy. So if I go ahead and add a super copy here, you can see that it's going to add just a basic bone in there. And then we'll actually do some things to kind of customize this. So first of all, let's go ahead and we're going to rotate this 90 degrees on the X axis. So if you hit R90X, that will bring that there. And I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up here and just put it right in the center of our eyebrow, perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just move this forward a bit so it kind of matches our eyebrow. Grab this front piece and move that back there. Great, so that's kind of centered in our eyebrow, but we need to go ahead and name this because since this isn't part of a preset group of like arm and leg, you can see that these are named like upper arm. This doesn't have that luxury because it's just a basic super copy, so it's just gonna be called bone. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to call this eyebrow.l and you can just change that in the bone menu here. We're gonna go ahead and move on and work on our flap next. So let's come back into the Rigify menu and we're going to add a another basic super copy. So I'm gonna go ahead, come back up here to the top, make sure super copy is selected. I'm going to add sample. Great, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up here and just hit R90, and then I'm going to press the negative or minus symbol, and that will flip it over there, which will kind of get us our view there. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this here, and I'm gonna grab the tip there and just move that out to the front of the cardboard flap. Now, because everything is centered, this should work, but let's flip the top view and just double check. And great, we're right here, we can see that we have our cardboard flap kind of enabled there. So we're gonna go ahead, we're going to grab this, go to the bone tab, and we're going to call this flap.l. Great, 
So let's go ahead, add another super copy here. And we're going to go into the side view and we're going to press R90 negative yet again. And what we wanna do is we want to move this bone up here and directly into the center on our jawbone because we left our jawbone directly in the center of our character, if you remember, so that it was easy to rotate from the modeling. So what we're going to do is we're gonna hit, grab our character, hit Shift S, and that's going to bring up this menu here to allow us to change our cursor. And we're gonna go ahead and do cursor to selected. And what that's going to do is bring our cursor directly into the center of our character, which if you followed along in the modeling tutorial or you're using the sample project, is exactly where we want our origin point to be. So we'll tab in edit mode here, make sure we're in the side view. And then if we grab this bone down here, and we wanna make sure we grab the bone, not one of the ends, and we hit shift S, selection to cursor, and we go into our wireframe mode and make that a bit easier to see. You'll see that it has snapped it into the center of our character, which is kind of the center of the jawline. So now what we can do is grab this front piece here, press G and then Y, and we're just gonna move this out on the Y axis just to make that a bit more visible for us. Great, so now we kind of have a jawbone there. Great, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this bone here and we're going to go ahead and name this bone jaw. And you don't wanna put a dot LRR after that because we don't wanna symmetrize it. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and symmetrize our bones. So in edit mode here, if we press A to select everything, and then we type in our space bar to search or whatever you have set to search and you go to symmetrize, you'll see armature symmetrize pops up. And if we click that, you'll see that that will flip everything over to the other side and it's automatically named it for us dot R by switching from dot L. So now we have all of our bones in place. So we're ready to begin parenting those bones. And then we're going to work on custom shapes and layers as well. So that when we click generate rig on rigify, it gives us a proper rig. First up, let's look at what we want to parent our objects to. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to grab the eyebrow bones here and the flat bones. And I'm going to grab this top bone here and I'm gonna hit control P and keep offset. And that's going to parent those to that so that when I move this around, it moves those as well, which is what I want. Now the face here is really kind of serving as the body. So we're also going to go ahead and grab both arms and connect those to this top bone as well. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab these upper leg bones, but rather than tie these to the face, cause we don't want the face flipping our legs all around, we're actually gonna tie them to the base here. So we'll hit control P and keep offset. And lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to take this jawbone and we'll go ahead and parent that to the face as well. And we'll just go ahead and keep an offset there. And that should be good for all the parenting that we need to do right now. So next up, we're going to work on kind of some layers and things like that so that we can make sure this is organized and makes sense when we generate our rig. So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, tap into pose mode, and we're going to begin grabbing some bones. Now, because we added these options here with the legs and the arms, those are actually automatically going to add to the correct layers. So if I go ahead and grab this thigh here, for example, and come down to my bone tab while selected in pose mode and go to rigify type, we can see that this is set to a limbs leg and it's already been assigned to the correct layers. But if we look at our super copy layers, you can see that they don't know where to go. So we need to go ahead and assign all of our super copy layers to the appropriate layers. So if you remember before in the beginning, what we did is we created this face layer up here. So we're gonna go ahead and apply our flaps, our eyebrows and our jawline right here all to the face layer. And then we'll make sure that everything in the head layer is set to the torso layer. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and grab our jaw, our eyebrows and our flaps. And then if you press M, it's going to allow us to put it on a layer. So over here, you can see that we have this set to layer one of the top row. So we'll go ahead and just go ahead and move that all to layer one. And if we click this, that'll make those visible. So this just toggles the viewport and the visibility. So now we know that all these are appearing on the face layer and that since they're set to special, they're going to get a yellow color code. Great. So now we wanna make sure that everything else is where it needs to be. So we already know that the arms and the legs are gonna automatically kind of appear on the correct layers, but we need to make sure that this head knows where to go as well, since it's not attached to a spine, it's not going to go into the torso. So let's go ahead and we'll grab these three bones right here. And we wanna put those all 
on the fourth layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit move and put those on the fourth layer. And that should make everything there appear on the torso layer. Great, so next up what we need to do before we generate our rig is we need to go ahead and set some custom object shapes for some of these kind of super copy bones we added. Otherwise, they're all just going to add as circles, which may not be ideal. So let's go ahead and we'll tab into pose mode and we'll grab each of these bones individually. So I'm going to come down here to the bone tab and then under rigify type, we can see this is set to a basic super copy. And then for the widget, we have the option of determining what that is. You can also turn off the widget and just choose to delete the bone if you prefer. So let's go ahead and I'm going to click circle here. And I'm gonna go ahead and make these a cube. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab that one, turn it into a cube. I'm gonna turn this one into a cube. I'm gonna make the eyebrows a cube as well. And then the jawbone, you may wanna do something different as it's going to be surrounded by quite a bit of control. So you can kind of choose what you want there. But I'm actually just gonna, again, go ahead and do a cube because I believe that's kind of all I need. So now we're actually ready to generate our rig. So before you do that, if you want, you can come up here, go to file, save as, and then you can kind of create a new version, a new incremental version. And then that way, if you have any mistakes and need to go back, it's easy to kind of fix. So I always recommend saving a new version right before you generate a rig. So we're gonna come up here with our rig selected in object mode, go to the tab here, and we're gonna click generate rig. Now, if I go ahead, we can delete this initial armature and we're gonna go ahead and hide our character at the moment being. And we can tab into here and we can begin kind of playing with all of our rig elements and making sure they work. So we can see up here that we have the face and if we turn that on and off, it's kind of turning off where all our face bones were. Torso is turning off our character head as we wanted. And then we have the torso tweak bones, the arm, FK and IK. So we can just make sure everything's kind of working as intended as it seems to be. And great. So we know the organization up here is working. Let's go ahead, grab our controls, move these around, make sure everything there is working as intended, which it is great. So now what we're going to do is adjust these sizes to kind of match our character. So I'm going to go ahead, turn our character back on. And we'll need to make sure to grab this armature. And because it's generated a new armature based off our old armature, we'll wanna come in under the armature settings here, click in front again, just to make sure that we can see that. And what we wanna do is adjust some of these custom controls, specifically the ones we made with the super copy to just be a bit more visually helpful. So what we can do is we can grab those bones there. So now if we grab a bone and we come to the bone tab here and then we come down to the viewport display, you'll see that we have this custom shape here. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and adjust our scale, our translation and our rotation to make sure that these kind of fit more naturally. Now this is kind of a tedious process, so I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through this, but you can adjust these bones to fit however or wherever you want. So next up, let's begin by adding the rig to our character. And this part's pretty simple since our character is a robot wig. We don't have to deal with any complex weight painting, making this an ideal rigging tutorial for beginners. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, grab this character, going to grab our rig here, and we're gonna hit Control P. And you're gonna see this list pop up. And this is going to automatically add a modifier to our character with the armature, and then also do some armature to form. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and choose with empty groups. And what that's going to do is add all the vertex groups to our character, but not apply any of the bones. If I go ahead and do with empty groups, it will apply to our character. And if we come down here to the vertex groups, we can see all the different bones have been applied to our character. So I'm gonna go ahead, come in here and tab into pose mode and grab these bones and you'll see that it's still not moving our character around. So what we can do is grab our character, tab into vertex mode, and we're gonna begin selecting pieces of these, these characters and applying them to the vertex groups. And I found that when doing more robotic style characters, this is by far the easiest way to do it in my opinion, because if you do automatic vertex groups, it might go ahead and start making things mesh and warp weird. So we're going to grab pieces of our character. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to switch into face selection view. And you can do that by pressing three. And then what we can do is we can hover over certain objects and press L and that will select the entire object. So if I go ahead, press L here, that will select the jaw. And then if I come over here, we can find the jaw in this list right here, we can click assign and then that will assign to the jawbone. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, press H to hide that part of the model, knowing that that part's done. Next up, let's do the eyebrow. So I'll go ahead and grab this left eyebrow here by pressing L, and we'll find that eyebrow over here in the list. So we have eyebrow left, we'll hit assign, and then we'll press H to kind of hide that, get that out of our way. Let's do the same thing with the right eyebrow. And then up here with the flaps, Great, so the arms here is where things might get a tiny bit more confusing, and that's because you'll notice over here that we have upper arm, upper arm, dot zero, zero, one. And if you notice, we have these tweak controls, which you can actually kind of just turn those layers off because we're not likely to use them on this character rig. That's meant for more kind of like cartoony character rigs where you want to kind of tweak the bones with a lot of topology and things like that, which we don't have here. So what you can do is just apply to the first one without the dot zero, zero, one, and that'll make it follow. So we'll go ahead, grab this upper arm here, make that follow upper arm left, go ahead, hide that. Take this one here, make this follow the forearm left. And we can do that on the opposing side. And then same things with the legs down here. We'll go ahead and in this case, it's the thigh and the shin. Lastly, we're going to select everything in the viewport and apply this to that kind of facial head bone. So we'll press A to select everything. And if we come down here, that was our head bone. If you remember, that was the top bone in the middle. We'll go ahead, click assign there. And now if we press Alt H, that will bring everything back into the scene. If we come back out into our object mode. You can grab your rig now and you'll see that it now moves everything. So you can go ahead, grab our characters, move their arms around, just make sure everything here is working, we have our eyebrows working. If we go ahead, grab our jaw, switch to side view and rotate, we can see that that's working as well. And now you're ready to begin animating your character. And one last note, feel free to organize your character with these rigs. Now, since we're working on a lower poly character, these tweak layers aren't going to be useful. So they're just kind of creating visual noise. So you can go ahead and just turn those layers off there and that'll make it a lot easier and cleaner to kind of animate your character. And then of course you can turn off the FK and IK as you're using them appropriately as well. And with that, you can begin animating your character, which we'll be doing a tutorial on how to do a walk cycle with this character next. As usual, thank you for watching and tag me in your creations at Southern Shoddy on Instagram and Twitter so that I can see what you've made. If you're interested in supporting the channel or getting some project files, I do have a Patreon and products that I sell. Links in the description below.